Welcome to RoboArmy. Have you ever wondered how self-balancing robots, drones, or even industrial machines achieve pinpoint accuracy? What if I told you that the secret behind all this technology is a powerful yet simple concept called PID control? Today, we are going to build a digital level indicator project to understand PID in action with our goal to maintain a precise position based on the distance of an object detected by the sensors. Basically, PID stands for Proportional, Integral and Derivative, a type of feedback system that constantly checks for errors and corrects them. It's like when you are riding a bicycle, if you start tilting too much on one side, you instinctively adjust to keep balance. PID does the same thing but with mathematical precision. It ensures smooth adjustment without overcorrecting or causing instability. This project builds a wall balancing PID controller using an Arduino Uno that acts as the brain of the system, one servo motor to adjust position based on sensor feedback, one ultrasonic sensor to measure distance to detect ball position, some jumper wires, one USB cable to upload the code, and a battery which is connected to power the Arduino. Let's quickly connect the components. First, take the Arduino board. Now we will wire up the ultrasonic sensor with male to female jumper wires. Connect the VCC of the ultrasonic sensor to the 5V on the Arduino. Then connect the trick pin of the sensor to the digital pin 11 of Arduino. Connect the eco pin to D10 of Arduino. At last, connect the GND pin of the sensor to the GND of Arduino. Now let's connect the servo motor using some male to male jumper wires. Connect its brown wire to the GND pin on the Arduino. Connect red wire to 5V on Arduino. And connect the signal wire that is orange wire to digital pin 3. Once you have connected everything, double check the wiring according to the circuit diagram. Now make the structure using cardboard as shown. Mount the ultrasonic sensor like this, attach the servo motor here in this way. Now download the code and library files given in the description below. Open the code file if you have already downloaded the Arduino IDE, otherwise download the Arduino IDE first. First we include the servo.h library which allows us to control servo motors easily. Servo.h library helps us send position commands to the servo. Servo servo creates a servo object to control the motor. Next, we define the pins used for our ultrasonic sensor. Trick pin D11 sends out an ultrasonic pulse. Eco pin D10 receives the reflected signal to measure distance. Now, let's set up three key PID tuning parameters proportional, KP, integral, KI, and derivative KD. This determines how the system reacts to change in the distance. KP proportional gain. If the error increases, this value adjusted the servo motor more aggressively. KI integral gain. Helps correct small residual error over time currently set to zero. And KD derivative gain helps smooth out sudden changes currently set to zero. Next, we declare variables to show previous and total error which are needed for integral and derivative calculations. Pre-error helps calculate how fast the error is changing. To-error accumulates all past errors to correct steady-state drift. In the setup function, we initialize the sensor pins, attach the servo, and start serial communication. Pin mode trig, output function configures trig pin to send ultrasonic pulses. Pin mode echo comma input function configures echo pin to receive reflections. Servo dot attach 3 function connects servo motor to pin D3. Servo write 50 function starts the servo at neutral position 50 degrees. In the loop, we simply call our PID function repeatedly to ensure the system is continuously adjusting the servo based on sensor feedback. Now let's look at distance function. This function measures the distance using the ultrasonic sensor and return the value in centimeters. How it works? Sends a 10 microsecond pulse from the trig pin, measure the time taken for the echo to return using pulse in function, convert the time to distance in centimeter using this formula. Distance is equal to time in microsecond by 29 into 2. Now let's dive into the most important part, the PID function. This function calculates the necessary Sarjo adjustment based on distance measurements. Set P which is set point function, uh, the desired distance 50 cm in this case. Either the difference between desired and measured distance. Now we compute the three PID terms. P value proportional term, directly multiplied.
multiplies the error by KP, larger error lead to bigger corrections. I value integral term, sums past error to correct for long term drift, currently inactive k equals to 0. And D value, which is a derivative term, predicts future error tends to prevent overshoot. Based on the difference between current and previous error, stores previous error for next calculation. Accumulates total error for integral correction. Finally, we map the PID output to servo movement and ensure it stays within limit. Map function converts PID value minus 135 to plus 135 in the servo range 0 to 135 degrees. Ensure the servo stays within valid movement limits. Final action moves the servo based on PID calculation. And that's it. Now dive into the real magic of PID control. But before we move on, we need to understand how each part of P, I and D works. First, let's start with the P in PID, which is a proportional control. It adjusts the position of the servo based on the current error, the difference between the desired position and the actual position of the ball. This means the bigger the error, the stronger the correction. But if we use only P control, the system might overshoot or keep oscillating without ever settling perfectly. By default, we have KP set to a certain value while KI and KD are initially set to zero. But why? Proportional gain or KP means immediate correction. The higher the KP value, the more aggressively the server reacts to the error. If the KP is too low, system will be slow and sluggish. If the KP is too high, the system may oscillate wildly and become very unstable. Now upload your code to the Arduino. Connect the Arduino Uno to your computer using the USB cable and then select port and board in the same menu and select Arduino Uno. Now upload the code by clicking the upload button. Let's observe how the system behaves. You will notice that the ball moves towards the center but never fully stops at the exact point. Now let's fix this issue of the ball, not fully stopping at the target position. This happened because of small accumulated error over time. That's where the integral control comes in. Integral gain or KI eliminating long term errors. KI accumulates past error to correct for any drift over time. If the ball is consistently off balance, increasing KI will help bring it back. But if KI is too high, it may cause a slow, growing oscillation due to overcorrection. Now, when we need test, we see the ball moves more accurately but still wobbles a bit. And the last step is to make sure that the ball does not wobble or overshoot. That's where the derivative control helps. It predicts future movement based on how fast the error is changing and slows things down before overshooting. Derivative gain or KD predicting and dampening the oscillations. KD helps predict sudden changes and smooth movement. If KD is too low, the system may oscillate around the target. If KD is too high, it may cause excessive damping, making movement sluggish. Now with all three PID working together, our system makes a very precise stable adjustment. Let's upload the final PID co code and see the ball move smoothly to the center and stay very balanced. Now we need a battery to power the Arduino and make it portable so it can work as a standalone device. Connect the battery clip to the 9V battery. Insert the DC jack into the Arduino barrel jack. Now your Arduino is running without needing a computer correction. And here it how it works. The ultrasonic sensor will measure the distance to an object. The PID controller will analyze how far it is from the desired position, then adjust the servo motor accordingly. The more precise the correction, the more stable the object says. So why did we go step by step? Because in the real world control system, we use different levels of P, I and D to fine tune performance. If we only use P, the system would oscillate. If we only use I, it would be very slow. If we only use D, it would be unstable. But when we combine them correctly, we get a very precise and smooth control system. Just like how robots, drone and automation system works. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching Robo Army and very happy coding.